Hi, I'm Stefan Korshak. I'm the Senior Defense Correspondent of Kiev Post Newspaper, and right now I'm talking to you from inside of a secret drone production facility uh, somewhere in western Ukraine. There's a, a goodly number of people producing hundreds of batteries every day for Ukrainian uh, kamikaze drones, uh, bomber drones, and ground drones. It started from nothing. It was a startup business and now they are putting out hundreds of drones every day. Let's take a look at their operation. The director of the company explained to us why his firm's latest battery is new, improved, and how it got that way. We allocate the resources that are available, have less weight and smaller dimensions, which allows us to better fulfill the conditions of the task and the specific task of the battery. The task was not just to make a better battery, but to make a better drone battery for full-scale conventional war. Ukraine is wet and cold. Ukrainian drone operators are fighting for their homes. Drones attack the enemy and recover wounded, all weather, 24-7, and under fire. A wartime battery has to be able to handle that. Soldiers demanded more power, more range, and more resilience. I am proud that we can produce batteries that are smaller in size and weight with a larger capacity, because it allows to perform more difficult tasks. So we implemented this battery. We were able to achieve a result of 179 kilometers on a motorized drone and hit targets. Ukraine produces about 4 million drones a year, second only to China. Most production is in small shops. Key components like batteries are assembled the same way. Almost always, before Russia invaded Ukraine a second time in February 2022, all those little companies were doing something else. In Powell Power's case, the company did 3D printing for local businesses. When the war started, like for many Ukrainian firms, People working in the civilian sector collected donations to buy equipment and food for soldiers going to the front. Some of the soldiers were friends, others were relatives. Feedback from the front was clear. Thanks for the food, please send drone batteries. The little 3D printing shop did the research. They had engineers in-house and could hire more. They decided they could manufacture batteries quicker and cheaper than importing them from China. That was three years ago. Alexei was an aerospace mechanic before the war. Now, he's an operations manager and a Ukrainian production engineer talking directly to soldiers about improving batteries for wartime use. The work here, in fact, is quite interesting and unusual. The challenges are constantly changing since nothing stands still. It is not for nothing that there is such a saying that war is the engine of progress. We constantly need to change. We respond to the need, and the war dictates the needs. What happens is we receive requests from the soldiers, and we try to meet those needs to the maximum. This is how Ukrainian war innovation works. Small manufacturers communicate directly with soldiers. Innovation and upgrades are a direct response. The process never ends. There are always new demands. Better connectors, improved waterproofing, less weight, more power in cold weather. Each upgrade tweaks the process. Conveyor belt production isn't really possible. Each batch needs a slightly different approach. Labor has to be skilled and flexible. Volodymyr Shushkin was a retired fighter jet mechanic when the war began. He's 62. In general, I do everything. I assemble, I cut blanks, I decide what needs doing, and I do it. I'm like a universal soldier. I assemble the battery from the bottom up until it's fully ready. First, I check everything. Then we take one section, connect it carefully, and keep moving step by step. I managed to put this together in just two days so it wouldn't drain and would be convenient to use later on the front line. That's essentially what my work consists of. 
Одна зручніша була використання потім на фронті. Ось такий от. Шишкин lived half his life in the Soviet Union. He's retired. He could have sat out the war and lived on his pension. Instead, he works long hours making drone batteries. Why does he do it? I like the work here. For one thing, it's a young group of people. The guys are young. For them, I'm like a grandfather, which I am actually. I looked for this kind of work for quite a while so that I could be useful and helpful. So I'm doing something so that our enemies can be destroyed, that they will be killed. I know that is cruel, but that's the truth. I know that I made these batteries. That's a positive thing. And it also pleases me that the production is in Ukraine. We need more of it, the more the better. So, at the end of the process, that's the result. Hundreds of batteries every day that go into Ukrainian ground drones and air drones. They go to the front, they go to the combat brigades, and they are used in war. Probably the most impressive part of this operation is that it came from almost nothing um, a bit more than three years ago, and it has turned into a major, a significant piece of uh, the Ukrainian military capacity. We need to remember that when we are looking at the way that the Ukrainians fight their war, they are not fighting it in a conventional way with major corporations producing giant machines. The Ukrainian war making machine is little businesses all over the country making a piece of the bigger defense effort. This is Stefan Korshak, Kiev Post.